they feel like sharing. We're open to that. Um, we can just have a discussion if somebody has something they just want to sort of wrap on. Um, it's relatively free form. Uh, there are a lot of new faces, so uh, sometimes it's a benefit to have just like an introduction section as well. Um, so I'll kind of leave it up to anybody and everybody to decide. All right. Well, my name is Gene. Who here knows about Akron, Ohio? What? Okay. A lot of people know Did about Akron. Did they there? <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> and, and Roller Derby. Oh, oh yes. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so for the past three years, I have been working on building a hackerspace. I'm board member at Sinhack. This is uh, the Akron Hackerspace's main webpage. Uh, we have, you know, the IRC, you know, usual, mailing list, everything. <clears throat> We, the reason I'm kind of bringing this up right now is because uh, we actually got covered like when we opened our doors in January. We'll have, you know, the Beacon Journal published an article, and it was okay. But recently, they actually did like a front page spread on us at Ohio.com, as well as uh, like on Sunday and Monday morning, front page like the cover story was us. Um, so you know uh, that that basically kind of like you know brought us from here to like a little bit here. And now we are like dealing with the deluge of people. So that's that's something that happened like uh, and I wanted to share it with everybody. So if you're flying by Akron, you know, do look us up. It's synhack.org. That's the main website. That's all you have to remember. I have some flyers handy uh, that we can make like copies of. I'm pretty sure we have a copy of here. Um, it's located at uh, 21 West North Street in Akron, Ohio. Uh, we have every hackerspace in USA meets Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Any any city. Okay, so whichever big city you're in, do make it a point to come down there. The purpose of a hackerspace is a ba it's basically a community garage. It's basically just like Lingog, where you can kind of come in free form and like collaborate, only with like things, like shop tools or whatever, whatever they have, laser cutter, 3D printer. Uh, we, in our repertoire, we have like a machinist who actually sponsors all the metal tools, wood tools um, that you can use, you know, if you don't have a garage. If you live in an apartment, maybe, uh, you know, you don't have the privilege of a garage, let alone tools. Um, uh, you know, it's a volunteer-driven organization. It's a not-for-profit. Uh, if you have like you know things that you don't use or you don't utilize, feel free to like go to either Synhack or Makers Alliance in Cleveland. They're located in Shaker Heights at Launch House. Launch House is a business incubator. Um, we actually work with uh, a lot of like uh, sister you know groups like Ingenuity Festival. Um, you know, uh, we, we collaborate with like uh, Code for America. They actually meet at our location sometimes. Um, so in and out, uh, you were mentioning about Python Foundation. Corey Fisher is actually one of the champions of Synhack. Oh. Champion is basically uh, somebody who's actually involved in the day-to-day. -day. I'm a board member, I'm not supposed to be there. I'm not supposed to be even doing this, but I do it anyway because I kind of feel for it. I, you know, it's, pers it's personal to me. I would like to create the space. We only have 2,000 square feet, but we've actually used it very, very you know, meticulously. Uh, we have, uh, you know, we are actually branching off into a lot of directions. So, you know, there's not like one core thing that we define ourselves to. There's like, you know, whichever member comes in, whatever background they have, they bring those skills to the group, and as a, as a whole, the group kind of, you know, uh, inherits all those skills. Uh, there's a lot of cross pollination. So, um, you know, it's particularly great for me because I kind of spend a lot of time, my time, you know, programming. So it gives me like an outlet to actually make stuff in the real world. So that's why I'm engaged. And education, of course, is another one. I do have my own blog where you know, I'm kind of chronicling all the talks that, are, that have happened at Synhack. Uh, actually, today I just added like a uh, all posts thing because people were complaining that they couldn't find my posts about Synhack. <laughs> so hopefully, you know, it's gswold.wordpress.com. I'm gswold online. Uh, you'll find all my activities since 2003 when I came to the States. Um, for the most part, uh, you know, this is like a, co a combination of other tech talks, other important events that I ha happen to have my camera for, as well as, uh, you know, Pepe, I think I've been here like a few times before, but I haven't videotaped anything. This will be the first one. So, back to nice. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so, you know, uh, a hackerspace is a great thing to have in any, in any and every city. So if you guys are from not like Cleveland or Akron, the major cities in Akron, in Cleveland area, or Northeast Ohio, uh, take the sentiment back, uh, you know, talk to the city council, start a hackerspace locally. Uh, you know, it, it's a great way to kind of uh, provide, you know, and kind of lean on existing uh, skills that you have in the community. And uh, 
the sky is the limit at that point. So you know, it's just you, you're limited by only your imagination. You kind of uh, break the mold of universities and schools and stuff like that. So you, you actually collaborate with them. So any questions on this? Actually, Patrick's talking right here too. He's actually in attendance today. He talked about uh, Ansible. Did you say I have a garage that's indoor and heated that I can borrow to do my oil changes? <laughs> um, well, actually, um, in the current facility, yes. Like, uh, <laughs> well, see you soon. <laughs> well, well, oil changes, I wouldn't say yes to oil changes because I know that what is involved and it's, you know, I mean, just pay 20 bucks. Yeah. You know, <coughs> pay 50 for a cloud provider. I mean, 20 bucks for an oil change. He needs to pay more than 50 for his bubble. Well, okay. All right. For use of your tools, you so, need my garage. So, uh, any question about the hack, uh, could be. catch me. You know, I'm here for another, you know, half hour or whatever amount of time you guys hang. Uh, I would like to kind of, you know, share. I mean, I, I gave, a, I, I went to Code Match last year and I actually gave a Fetcher Kucha on Synhack where I just kind of shared like the faces of Synhack. That's where I heard about it. it it's, probably, it's probably over here, so yeah. While you're up there, can you discuss the differences between a Pika Kucha Lightning Talk and uh, on Ignite? <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> 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 yeah, so basically, you know, um, we, we had like a speaker here where we invited like, some people to talk, and uh, Tori gave a talk on uh, Git, which was a pretty, pretty cool talk that I personally benefited from. We had like a talk on 3D printing. Book scanning. Book scanning is like a rig that you create to scan books. You put like two decent mm -hmm. regular cameras, point and shoot. Put in a, you know, so one of our doctor members, you know, he's a doctor at SUMA. He actually wanted to scan, you know, material in the uh, office environment. And so he actually made the rig, the research book scan, and gave a talk on it. So now I'm sharing it with you guys. You, know, you can actually learn about the art of it. I think Google does it like for a living. Uh, they actually, you know, scan all the historical books. So if you have, like, you know, your grandpas and your grandmas, they have heirlooms. Now is the time to scan it before they kind of rot into nothing. Um, let's see what else did we have. Uh, Mini Maker Fair, yeah. So, so we actually had uh, Mini Maker Fair was another event that we are, we helped uh, the Akron Public Library with. Uh, we actually taught people to solder. That was like a really simple exercise. People got like a little, uh, you know. Uh, from Make Magazine, little you know robot-shaped PCBs with uh, blinking LEDs on them. You know, so just regular attendees were able to benefit from that. Uh, you know, they, they took home the art of soldering. Uh, we hope that you know they'll be back. Uh, lots of schools are kind of trying to connect with us to collaborate on educational programs for kids. So um, I can go keep going on. So you know, if anybody else wants to talk about like lightning style about anything, come on up because. You know, this night is not enough for me to finish. You want to keep talking about Saint Hagen and other stuff. So I would uh, say that if anybody else is down in the Akron area, uh, the Akron Linux Users Group does a lot of stuff too. We yes. meet the Eight first up. Thursday of every month, uh, and we're also in meetup as well. What's your average attendance there usually? Um, actually, lately we've been pretty high up, but it does depend on the subject. Uh, but I think the last couple that I've been to have been. Like 20, 25 people probably. So it's a hundred percent more than the Cleveland Night like, Street. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, you know there was one. That's how much uh, <laughs> I knew about the Cleveland one. Yeah. Uh, uh, it does exist, but I think much like well, the Devops. It's everywhere. It's very evident. Yeah. 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 It started out with, uh, <laughs> yeah, two percent, two percent. He never shows up. I don't know why he's never out. Hey, if you want to see him. He's a member of all these people. Yeah. Like every group. But you know what? The only one he attends is yeah. breakfast on Tuesday. So if you guys want to catch up with crew, okay. tomorrow morning, <laughs> breakfast in Akron. Yeah. Okay, so, yeah. So Akron Linux User Group has a his history behind it that, you know, in, in, the, in the beginning of time, there was no Akron Linux User Group. There was only Akron Digital Group, which was, yeah. you know, a group of uh, ham operators. They kind of started that, and it was like more double E kind of. And then they, they loved Linux when they actually used it for the day-to-day, -day, doing the ham operations, you know, like for shortwave radio and stuff. So a lot of, then they started the Akron Linux User Group. Uh, they meet a new era exclusively because they love the chicken paprikash there. That's <laughs> <laughs> 100% no true. joke. I, I was going to say, no, that restaurant is actually unique. It's, I've had, you know, I've had people tell me like, you know, it's better there than Cleveland even. So, um, so for the most part, uh, you know, now it's like an amalgamation of like, you know, a lot of different, uh, you know, 
age groups, if you will. Yeah. If there's the you know, older older generation who has like the ham and Linux experience, and there's a newer generation who's like like Patrick, you know, they they, they dabble in like lots of different Linuxy wizard wizard style things, if you will. So it's a pretty decent mix of yeah. hobbyists and yeah. professionals too. So yeah. you know, one month it can be like, how do you run LibreOffice, and the next one can be like. How do you build an IPsec tunnel by using, you know, Open Swan? So, like, it, like I said, it can depend on the, the subject, and depending on how your attendance rate and uh, who's in attendance, the, what kind of audience you get. But uh, generally, it's pretty good. I would suggest if you guys are down that way or can come down that way, come down. We'd love to have you. So. And on that note. The restaurant they eat at is an amazing red sauce Italian too. On the yeah. informal on the week off. Yeah, the informal, the the Paris ones, yeah. The, so yeah, the first Thursday of every month is the formal. We eat, someone gives a presentation, and you can eat chicken pop crash. And then the informal is the third Thursday of every month, which is at the Italian restaurant in Paris ones, and it's just there because because we all. A lot of nerds and like to talk about nerdery. So, <laughs> some of the people are in the automobile too, just in case they want to like, collaborate on the like, car. Well, you know, they, 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 they work on their own cars and you know, it's it's, it's kind of cool. So, thank you. Thank you for the time. And I just said hi on their behalf. There you go. Yeah. You know, I can cross all at home, see how come I'm in my database, I probably have like hello from Cleppy. And if you didn't know, Cleppy has had an IRC channel for like seriously like 10 years. Wait, what? Please. What? Drop it. Oh, so we're actually going to present this. Now. Actually, I've been on it, and then I. Got I knew you were on there. I, yeah, I'm, I'm going to write. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Martin, the other week, I tried to people to come Lepin, in, but it was me and Laco. I'm pretty sure he Frank or or Piernot or somebody started that that channel like seriously like ten years Is it ago. Registered? <laughs> it's registered. Like There's only like four people in there, and most people are <laughs> idle. You're gonna, you're gonna. This is gonna be fun. Martin is gonna get so mad if like 30 people show up and start talking. It's gonna be great. <laughs> so please show up and start talking. Hey, so come on. This, what is this crazy thing? Ben, pissy dog, he break. I spent many years working on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just show Martin. Where is it? Ben? I'll be like, hey, what's going on? It, I'm, I'm like, I'm like, How is this better than the dude? <laughs> it's not. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Was Z trying to create a chatbot earlier today? What? No. I just used like a web chat. I was joking. I have a basic I have simple needs. Sweet feature that if you fire it up, you never know which one of your CPUs is going to be picked for five hours. <laughs> <laughs> all, of sudden, all of a sudden, you're on YouTube and you what don't the hell? know. I'm on YouTube. <laughs> Look, right there, YouTube. Say hello to the Wacom forward. You can make your custom sign with this. Oh, that's cool. Awesome. Yeah, so if you, know, you put out this or an object, like a wooden object, you can make a yeah. board from it, plastic your pad, all that stuff. Hmm. Uh, that's a slick. That's opening day. That's my manager from Charlotte that a summer ago. Uh, Wait, you were sure? Yeah, exactly. Like my buddy <laughs> Scott Scott McCarty, who RSVP but did not show up. Yeah, As yeah. per usual, he was there on opening day. Yeah, I was gonna say I gotta give him crap for it. He said uh, Andrew Lightoff, he's making beer right here. He's actually trying to uh, like show you like homebrew beer in China. That can't be legal. Okay. No, it's legal. It's legal. Up to up to a certain quantity. Yeah. Um, hey, there's a hey. Speaking of that, there's a hacker. Well. There's, it's there's more for homebrew startup right over here in uh, Tremont. Oh yeah, in, in Trying to get the great. commercial brewing. Yeah, yeah, so that's uh, that's the vacuum formula yeah. yeah. action. It's actually yeah. heating up the surface. Yeah. Sensitive yeah. Right. Like jobs can give away like, copper uh, too. Uh, you know, make this back for you. Uh, <laughs> so are there materials for this? Uh, yes, yeah, so, yeah, so like, we have number. Yeah. We have number yeah. available. We have like scrap metal. If you want to do well. oh yeah, we have a big welder, big welder. Oh, so so materials are there for sale. Yeah. Yeah, well, not sale. It's just like for the community. Yeah. Okay. You can, so you suggest can bring your donation. Own. Yeah, you can. Yeah, suggest a donation. You can actually bring your own materials. Let's say if you're working on making a rocket of your own. I don't know. I mean, people build all sorts of stuff, like you know, your own hot air balloons. So a space program, space program in real life. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so, uh, so, uh, so, uh, so Doug, Doug Costello, he works for Bridgestone. He runs, you know, we actually 
actually have a, a, a revision that's previous to that, a maker gear, that we actually have the space and we, we build like yeah. objects from a thingiverse, if you will. Um, he actually brought some samples on what he made in January. So it's all these little gear. Now, another angle, oh, there's not this guy, I think, in the mirror back, but he's actually getting a sample from Doug right now. Right there. Doug actually made like a pet speeder. He uh, three printed that as well. Uh, what else do we have? Yeah, that's Chris Eglin. These are the two champions. I'm a board member. That's Mayor Don. Great guy. Uh, Lauren Eggs, uh, Patrick probably knows her. She actually printed a sign at the, uh, you know, with the vacuum former. So that's what a typical sign would look like. Does anyone here know uh, Dave Eggs? What? He works for Red Hat. Yeah, he does uh, most of the public, uh, <laughs> the public <laughs> department. So he does a lot uh, of the government stuff. He's interested. That's a TARDIS. If you have any questions about it. So, I also saw the uh, fal falcon. What falcon. is this? The what falcon? Malay falcon? No, they had the uh, Maltese falcon. Yeah, that's the word. I was like, there's only two nerdery falcons out there, so I fifty fifty uh, chance. So Jack, this, this is a great story. The, how, how many of you know the car that actually has lights that go like this? Like you know, they they kind of. It's a sound. Yeah, 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 I don't know. I don't know. You, you guys know what? Oh, he, he actually broke his part and he actually ordered like an eighty dollar brass part from online. You know, like wherever. He's like, I'm not gonna pay another guy another dime on this thing. So he he actually he's a slot car racer. So he actually uh, knew the art of mixing two chemicals together and make like an object that's hard enough, as hard as that. So he actually poured it together, made a mold of this thing, and that he actually combined the two part resin and created an object himself. So this is like you know. An example of you know how Andy used his kind of like background knowledge in like sure. slot car racing, applied it to like fixing, fixing his own car and making That's parts for awesome. cheap. The, the part I asked him how much this would be like if he retailed it, he, he'd just charge like fifty cents for it compared to eighty eight dollars. I mean it, it's like that economical. I'm just trying to giving it. I'm giving you an example because uh, I believe that you know the more your, your skills enhance, you actually can create more jobs or create businesses and then thereby create more jobs. So stuff like this, simple stuff like this, kind of jogs your memory, allows you to kind of mix and match ideas together. I, I did not kid when I said uh, keep on going. <laughs> I can keep going. Still well, keep I mean, I, I, have a, I, I, I have a 3D printer at home. And yes. It's, and it's, to be honest, my kids use it more than I do for right. printing out stupid knickknacks. Like, right. uh, the, the number of sonic screwdrivers in my house is pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> well, the question I have for you is, is can you really uh, have you as a parent encouraged them to go out in the marketplace and sell it? No, no, yes. no, so, no, so no, they, no. Because, because, because they're going to throw it away. They, right. they, they're not trying to sell anything. They don't want to make right. deal with something. Listen. What kind of warranty did that 50 cent part have on it compared to the $80 part? <laughs> well, the Probably the same yeah, warranty. Okay. Okay. <laughs> the $80 part was brass. Sure. And this is actually like a plastic feel, like you know. Sure. It's like so, what's the warranty plastic. on it? Then, like when it strips out, what do, who do well, I? Well, you can actually or? have like in your dash. You we well, just you make another one. Yeah. 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 Just make another one. I just wonder yeah. how long it took to. Yeah. 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 So yeah. Man hours. <laughs> <laughs> well, the prototype always takes a long time. Right. Now, now, we can first. He's actually the guy who actually took Arduino. Everybody, who knows Arduino here? Anybody heard about the Arduino? Who doesn't know about Arduino? Okay, nobody. Okay, great. So, uh, Ken Burns is the owner of Tiny Circuits. He actually uh, designed uh, a circuit that's about this yay big, like quarter size. He took the same Arduino circuit and he reduced it down. Uh, his is a success story in Akron, Ohio, where he actually was able to not only like uh, you know initially proof of concept it, Kickstarter it, succeed at Kickstarter. He was actually able to form a business around it, get the required material, uh, manufacturing equipment. Like you know, I think they have like a. I don't know, like, I call it a pizza machine, you know, because it basically looks like a pizza machine, only it does like PCB pick and place. Oh, pick and place, there you go, that's the name. So he, he, he ordered a pick and place machine, for, uh, you know, for real cheap, and now he's cranking out these tiny, tiny Duinos in Akron, Ohio. See? So that's a great example of how you could actually, he could apply his skill that, uh, he used to work for a corporation here in Cleveland, uh, you know, as an electronics designer, if you will. So his, his story is a little bit different. You know, like, because he, he knew, like, Eagle Cab and stuff, like, those software packages, and he was able to, like, compress down the circuit to, like, really small. So now the quad copters and the load people, like, they use his circuits. Actually, like, node copters? Yeah, 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 the node, node guys, yeah. So, so they use, like, you know, stuff like, like, that he produces, 
And he has shields for like Wi-Fi. You can actually have like Wi-Fi on it. You can actually have a GPS chip on it. So he's manufacturing all these chips in Akron, Ohio. You know, and uh, this is I'm kind of like plugging him in because it's a success story, literally. You know, uh, right here in Akron, Ohio. So that's super awesome. Yep. So you know, that's Devin Wolf. He's the machinist I was talking about. Because of him, we actually have all the metal tools in the space, and he maintains them. <coughs> he safety trains people. Um, you're encouraged to come down during open hours to check out the space. You can, you know, learn. You can use the machines as well. Some of them which don't actually involve chopping your finger, but uh, for the ones that do involve chopping of the finger, he's the guy who would actually do the safety training. Chop yeah. <laughs> That's not safe. That's how to safely chop your finger off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that moment, I just have to chop your finger off, and now. So, <laughs> so you know, just uh, you know, trying to let you guys know about it. So there's been a lot of talk about Akron today, I know. and yep. there's um, there's something you guys do uh, every every Tuesday. You mentioned the breakfast thing. Yes. Well, I was yeah. lamenting on the fact that I don't have a car. Uh, oh, okay. I can get there. Well, you can you have Zipcar. Well, I could Zipcar, but see, Jeff yeah. Schuler, he he's a Port for America guy, you know, who comes out to the, the meetings in Akron, so he rents a Zipcar and you know comes down there. So where I was seeing it. We, we basically we started, we're going to try to do one in two weeks, a Cleveland Tech breakfast, same idea. Oh, okay. yeah. I so if anybody's interested, I, I just sent out the... The, the breakfast is at 7 p.m.? I changed it. Yeah, time is hard. Where is the invite located? It's on the Cleppy site for now. We'll just, just go from there. My friends didn't invite me. We'll, uh... <laughs> or the now So the breakfast is not at 7 p.m.? No, it is at 7 a.m. Oh, I don't know if I can make that. I can make yeah, it 7.30 for you, old man. Come on. I know you're up anyway. You're up at 5.30 reading the newspaper. <laughs> I don't get a newspaper anymore. Oh. Newspapers are so 20th century, man. I'm just giving you crap. <laughs> if you come to and if is that too early or not early enough? <coughs> Seriously. Let me know. Please keep it I can, I can make it. All right. Drive the list. <laughs> If you, if you go to Sinhack and you leave your gear around, don't you know you better put a sticker that looks like that. <laughs> Otherwise, it might get like disassembled and put back together and like other things. <laughs> Just like that Toy Story, you know, uh, characters, you know, like the toys that put themselves, I don't know, magically. Yeah. <laughs> You'll come back and your Mac will be an IBM. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> oh yeah, we have a we have a permanent uh, pinball machine which we allow you know member, uh, attendees to kind of take apart or. You know, Take the, we open it up so that people can see the inside. Well, that's really? super cool. Yeah, yeah. 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 and we're actually building a little bit more. So, so do I have to sign a liability waiver to use these? Yes, things? yes, you will have to. Yes. I'm all about the signing things tonight. Okay. So how much is it to be a member? I pay twenty-five dollars a month because I, like I supported it. You know, supported. I support it. Uh, you don't have to pay a dime to actually come down and use the space. Uh, like I said, everybody's situation is different. Some people see immediate value. Thirty-five dollars is like, you know, they're like, holy wow. Like I meet some people that you know who 